lack of sleep, high stress, the surges of adrenaline. Some of my friends say you abuse yourself, you abuse your body just to do this, is it worth it? It is worth it because otherwise a life will be lost. Trump is starting, like just came in. Okay, <laughs> coffee. Okay, Whoa! Even more painting. You need to do the You need to do the face of the The hour is very, very crucial because that will decide whether the patient survives or not. The golden hour is not when the patient arrives in the hospital. The golden hour probably started 20 to 25 minutes ago when he was first hit by a car. So you probably got hit. Paramedics said it was a van, but then the patient said it was a van. Most of the time, you only have some corroborative history from whatever the paramedics saw. We just have to go on our clinical experience and what we're going to do. Okay, okay, prepare, prepare to Structures of the skull. Luffy is young. Prior to having a trauma unit, the care of a trauma patient was very poorly coordinated. The mortality rate was very, very high. The doctor who has the loudest voice or greatest power in the hospital will then go do whatever he needs to do first. But now, the trauma surgeon decides who does what. It's very alert. Uh, what? Quick, so we need to do a survey of the left lower limb. Make sure that there are no other fractures. Auto is on the way. With power in inverted commas, it's actually a comfort one where our colleagues allow us to now guide them in their treatment. We'll let the orthopedic surgeon see and decide when to fix him. He should be okay. Yeah, I sleep with my phone. I shower with my phone. I go for dinners with my phones on the table. Uh, yeah. If the patient had bled into the chest after we put the chest tube in, I would have quickly opened the chest. We must always have a plan B. Worst plan C. 
But what you don't know is I actually have up to plan F. When we have a complex trauma case, it's never a solo practice. Which one? You mean the arm, right? The hands may need to be done tomorrow. Uh, no, we're we'll clean out, we'll bandage it. They can come and assess it tomorrow. Okay, Okay. let's get out of this first and we'll take it from there. She had already lost a fair bit of blood. You know, blood pressure, her respiratory rate, plus her blood results were not the most ideal. This patient's risk is not life-threatening. We do have time to come back where she's much better. We are like the conductor of an orchestra. We may not have all the subspecialty knowledge that a bassoon player has, for example, but we know what their roles are, we know when they're supposed to come in, and that's where we coordinate them. So far, this has been the so-called lucky care, yes, eh? because um, no major problems from surgery that I've had since wearing this cap. So I'm thinking of washing it next week, so that... <laughs> okay, but uh, end of the day, I mean, we all have our own little quirks as surgeons. It's very highly intelligent people, as at me, right, who's trying to rationalise the bad luck that they have. Yeah, yeah I just realised now, uh, I've been here since... I've been here for 12 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you got two more hours before my caffeine runs out. Well, I hope to go home unless my registrar calls me again and then we'll be back here again. But I'll be back at work at 7 30 tomorrow. When we are on duty, right, we don't have much control over our time. I don't plan any parties. I don't invite people to my house. Relationship-wise, people who are around you will also have to accept that. Is that a sacrifice? Depending on who looks at it. I don't see it as a sacrifice. I find that if we choose this profession, and the word sacrifice shouldn't be in the vocabulary when we describe this. I think it should be something that we willingly do The one that left the greatest impression on me was the case of a motorcyclist who was on his way to work. I went to see the wife. She was extremely calm, which was made me even more uncomfortable. Then she asked me, can I go, can I, can I go and take a look after my four-year-old kid now? Whatever we do to a patient, the downstream effect to the family for your kid is really, really large. I owe it to our patients to give them the best shot they have at life. When we first started, we started looking at mortality rates. Then after we started looking at returning the patient to their activity. Hi, my name is Lana. So I'm the Hi. psychologist that's seeing oh, you. Okay. Is it good timing? Talking about it? It, it, it stirs up. It's when I saw the idea of CPR to come Of course, nobody wants that to happen. He is putting on a strong front, especially when he talks about his guilt. There's this pause, you know, and, you know, that, that deep breathing in.
your right leg, step forward, use your hands and offload. If we do not return them back to a social economic state that they started with, or at least something resembling that, then now they would now be a burden to their own families. On a bigger level would be a burden to society because now we will have to support them. Okay, well done. Hello. Okay, how's everybody's day? I had a mentor who said, do you know that if you do trauma, when shit hits the fan, you must be able to mop it up properly. And not everybody can do it. The people who like to do trauma are adrenaline junkies. Yes, the hours are long. Uh, the, sometimes the emotions do run high. But the rewards at the end of the day would be worth it. How do you know you meant it to be a trauma? Yes. I watch ER. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs>